go to uh, Habeka and let's uh, find that I love this section. I reread it about four times this week, and then last night around two o'clock in the morning, I read it also. Uh, the Lord was doing something because Habeka is kind of, when you read the whole book, it's only a couple chapters, it's kind of the condition of what we're going through in the world right now, I think. And are we going to trust God or not trust God? Are we going to walk across the line and say, I'm all in for you, God. No matter what happens, God, I'm on your side. Can you say amen? Amen. That means he loves me, so that's And we are praying for Mason. So, Mason's here today, which is a miracle. All right? So, if you're, you got that are visiting, you don't mind, right, Beth? No, I don't mind. I was on Facebook talking about Mason. Hey, Mason. Mason needs a brand new kidney. Right, Mason? Yeah. And so we're praying and believing that God will restore that kidney that he has right now. And it will be a miracle. So just for him being here today is just amazing. So I'm excited for that. So we're, we're going to look at the, we're going to pray for him at the end together. Is that okay? Should we do that? Do you believe, how many believe in miracles today? Amen. Maybe because you do because you're here, right? We believe that God can do the miraculous, right? And it's not that we can do it. It's that, that God can do it because he said he was going to do it for us. But look at, let's look at that back up. And uh, I think we're going to go verse 2 and 3 of chapter 2. It says that the Lord answered his prayers. And we'll talk about the rest of it in just a minute. Said the Lord, then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that the, the heralds may run with it, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks to the of the end, and it will provide uh, it will not be proven false. Though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. God says, write the vision, write the prophecy on tablets so everybody can run with it and share it. Amen? At Capital City Church, we said, we're a family of servant missionaries, right? We say that for a reason. Our, that's our byline. That's who we are. That's who we want to be. That's who it, I've been praying. God, let us be that. Father, we're a fa God is our Father, and, and we're family because of God, right? We're all called sons and daughters of God, right? He said, and also he says, we're, we're servants because Jesus served us even unto death. Look at your neighbor and says, I'm going to serve you unto death. Huh? Yeah. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to serve this community. I'm going to serve people no matter what it takes so they can know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and come to the full knowledge of Christ so that they will not be in judgment when judgment time comes. Amen? Judgment time's coming, folks. Right? We want everybody to be on, on, with us when we're in heaven, right? We don't want to see, right, them in eternity. I was praying this week, and God reminded me of a time when I prayed about the lost. Did you ever pray for lost people? Yes. You pray for people that don't know Jesus, people that are so confused because of the things of this world and all the isms that's out there. They don't know what truth is. And I think our prayer can break through that. Because the Holy Spirit will bring truth to you and bring truth to the unbeliever. Amen? Now, I remember I was in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. It's a little town outside the, the military base there. little fishing town. And I was praying. And I was asking God, God, I want all my buddies that are in the Marine Corps to be saved. I pray out their names to God. God, please save this one. Save this one, God. What is going on? And I was crying out to God. I mean crying like... Um, I never had a baby, but anybody here have a baby like some of the ladies, right? And you, the, right? And the muscles and the pain and it all, right? I was like that. I was birthing. I was in pain, travailing over my friends because I didn't know if they'd ever make it to heaven or not. And I felt like I was the only one that could reach them for Jesus. Amen? I was the only Christian in the platoon, but, you know, I mean, other people would do too, right? But I just had this urgency in my spirit. God, I didn't know that the next day I would cry out and I'd cry out God. And God showed me this. And you remind me of this in this prayer, trip, this prayer uh, time. Is I remember seeing a vision of what hell is like. 
And in my mind's eye, I saw this big pit and people trying to crawl out this pit. But they couldn't, they couldn't get out. It, it was, the walls were too steep, the, whatever that was made out of, I don't know. But they were crawling and trying to get out. And there was people like me reaching down, and this is what the Lord showed me in my eye, reaching down and grabbing their hands and taking them out of the pit. That's what God wants us to do. Amen? That's the urgency in our spirit. That, that when we pray, we're praying, what is God's will that we pray? We're praying that the unbeliever will come to the full knowledge of Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, how many here have a lot of things to pray for? Like, you got stuff in your life, right? We have things going on. We have financial needs. We've got marriage problems. We've got uh, kids problems. We've got problems, right? But what happens when we focus, when we focus our prayer time on what is priority in God's life? Because He knows the problems that you're going through. Amen? He knows your, your struggles. He knows what you're fighting against. He knows all those things. And I believe God wants to answer those. I mean, He's already sending the answer to you. Amen? Do you believe that? He wants that. But His heart is that none perish and that all come unto repentance. That all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That we have the power of the Spirit of God in us. So we don't know what to pray. The Spirit will pray through us. And that we'll pray the very heart of God. Amen? So this 40 days of prayer, I think, is so amazing. We just started five days. I and mean, we just got into this, right? It's like, I pray for you that you would have a new awareness of the presence of God in your life. That you would know when you pray that our Father in heaven is hearing every word that you pray. He is. That's what Jesus did for us. He opened that curtain when he died and rose on the third day. So we have access to our Heavenly Father that wants to hear every word, everything in your heart, every need. He wants, as sons and daughters, he wants to just come in yeah. to his presence. He wants to overshadow you with his grace and love. And he wants to reassure you that he has it. Amen. Amen. And we're going to pray to him and say, God, give me the courage so I can do the work that you call me to do. God, give me the power to do the, your will over mine. And that's what the praying is about, isn't it? When we get in the presence of God, it's like Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? Not my will be done, but your will be done. We can't do that unless we're in his presence, right? Because we're like, maybe it's just me. We're just like selfish people. <laughs> right? Like, we want stuff. Like, God, I want a new car. I need this. I need that. I need that. But when I'm in the presence of God, like the circle part time, it's like, man, that's not even important anymore. I mean, when you get in His presence, right? It's like, I have this laundry list of things that I pray for. Do you have one of those lists? Tina, you said something that was awesome. Get a journal. I have journals that I start and stop. How many love it? Any journal people here? Like, I'm the horrible journal person. Like, I'll journal for two or three weeks at a time, and then three or four months later, I'll pick it up again. So I'm like that horrible person. But when I do, I can go back to my journals right now and look at, has God answered these prayers? The first year I was here, my, my son, Andrew, that you met, was in Bible college, right? And we couldn't afford, like, any extra. We couldn't afford nothing to give him. Like, you had a son, you're going to have to get a job. You know, I gave you the truck so you could drive around school, that's fine, but you have to get a job, you know? So I remember praying right here at this, this pulpit right here, and my little booklet, I, have, I still have it in my office, and I would write all my kids' names, what to pray for, all the people in the church at the time, what to pray for, all the different needs of the church, and I have, and every month I rewrite that, but the ones that got, all the prayers that got answered, I would just leave there, and I just write the new prayers on the next page, right? I don't know how you journal, but that's what I was doing. And so I could go back and look at how God answered that prayer, and I remember him calling me right after prayer one morning, to Dad, guess what? You know, he got invited to a dinner uh, at the college, and it was all these old preachers got was there. All the people, people are in a preaching degree. He, he took off all preaching degrees, so he went and learned how to preach. So he does a really good job. Anyway, right? I think. Yes. All right. And so he went, he uh, went to that dinner, and they invited him to come to that dinner, and they gave him a scholarship for school, right? Like, oh, great. 
praise the Lord, right? Because I was like, God, I don't even know how he's going to get lunch money, right? And, but God provides because we ask him. So I have a journal. I go back and look at him. Yes, God, praise the Lord. Because that's what he said. When you write these things down, he's going to show you. He's going to show you in time that it's going to happen. Amen? So I believe that with all my heart. I think I changed my heart about Junior. I'm going to do as much as I can now. Every, every prayer I'm going to try to write down because I believe God wants to show me his glory. He wants to show me that I have favor with him. Amen? He wants to show me that he wants to bless me through answered prayer. And my prayers are not for myself at this time. In my life, I don't care about, right? I got stuff. I got a place to live. I got a car. I got a wonderful life. I got things, right? So I don't, but I'm praying that God move in your heart and the city heart in an amazing right way. I want to see the glory of God in Madison, Wisconsin. I want to see lives change. I'm tired of all, I'm, I'm getting off track now, but. <laughs> Let me just preach for a minute, all right? But I'm tired of the division in the church in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm tired of the division of the church all across the country. Let's go to John chapter 17. My favorite, my favorite, one of my favorite. I'm going to save this for the end, too. So you guys get the end first, so praise God. Yeah, get the, you get the meat and the dessert at the same time. Hallelujah. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. It's on page 992. In my Bible. Hallelujah. This is a prayer that Jesus prayed for you and me. This is a prayer that, in, I was thinking, look at Dion and Dion's like, shake your hand. You know exactly where I'm going, right, Dion? Because this is my heart. It's not changed. God, Dion's been with me for a long time, so he knows me, right? He knows what I'm going to say next. Because I believe that the church, when we can be unified, like Jesus prayed for us, the power of God can be defeat every foe. Every demonic force, everything that's holding back the power and presence of God to be in our city and in your life, it can happen when we're together in unity. Amen? I mean, and I'm talking about doctrine. I'm talking about everything. Everything. I'm talking about everything. I don't want to list them right now. I want to list them so bad. I want to list them so bad because, you know, we need to understand there's power over every situation. If we, as a body of Christ, would come together, and God wants to bless us with that power. Yes. Amen? So look at this. It says, this is verse, um, Jesus prayed for disciples and through verse 6, and then verse 20. 20, he says, my prayer is not just for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. Who is that? Not just for them. He's not only praying for the disciples, right? But he's praying for every one of us that believe the message that they preach. That's you and me. I believe that. I don't know if you, can, you scholars out there can look at that. I don't see it any other way. He's praying for us. He's praying for us. Look what he prays. He says, that all of them, you and me, May be one. We'll be one in the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. You know why the world doesn't believe God, Christ is, is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Son of God? Because we're not one. There's so much confusion out there because we, we're, we're not together. We're not preaching together. We're, not, we're serving together. We're, we're, we're judging each other. God says, when we're one, just like the Father and the Son and the Spirit are one, right? There's not a separate message. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you what the Father says. The Holy Spirit is only going to repeat what they said, so we should say the same thing, right? What's the most important thing? That they understand that their sins can be forgiven. Amen? That they, there is eternal life. There is hope in our lives. Amen? It comes through Jesus only. The songs that we sang today, Jesus be glorified. Jesus be glorified in my life. Jesus be glorified in this place. Jesus be glorified. Amen. Lift up the name of Jesus, and he said that he would draw all men unto himself. Hallelujah. What would happen when the whole world knows Jesus? That would be a different thing, right? So we have to look at that. Are we one? Like Jesus prayed for us. I'll look, look a little further. Says, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you have given me. <laughs> he has given you his glory just like the Father gave to him. 
So you already walk with the glory of God in you. We are the glory of God in the earth. We represent Jesus. He's going to give us his presence, his peace, his love that's, that the world will understand because Christ in us. Amen? Verse 23. I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. And I and to see your glory, to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. And he loves you too. Righteous Father, through the world though the world do not know you, I know you. And they know uh, that you have set me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. So we, when, we, when we were teaching, we're teaching that, Lord, I submit all my life over to you so that you can be glorified. That means all my thoughts, right? How many have thought issues? Like, you have trouble thinking good stuff, right? Thank you for being honest with me. Right? So we want to submit all those thoughts to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Like, how do we submit all our bad thoughts to the Lordship of Jesus Christ so the glory of God will be revealed in us? And we don't walk around as we, we did Pastor Andrew talked about weeks ago, just going through elementary things over and over. Repentance over and over. I gotta repent, I gotta repent, I gotta repent, I gotta repent. Like, look, we can walk in the glory of God and have the power of God in our lives, right? Now, when you make a mistake, repent. I'm not wrong with that. But just don't, we're not like defeated foe. Like, right? we have victory in Jesus. We have overcomers of our past. Amen? We don't have to identify what, what we used to be. We're new in Christ Jesus. It does say old things pass away in our lives, and then everything. In our thinking, and our actions, and our mannerisms, all that becomes new because we reflect the glory of God in the earth. Right? Don't always, like, we can't always, I, I, we had a, uh, uh, in our initial community meeting a few, week, a few weeks ago, we had this time to talk about that. What is? What are we dealing with, like, you know, what are some things we're dealing with, but we're not going to talk about sin, right? We're not, what, are, what is holding you back from being the glory of God here? Like, what do you need to repent of that other than the sin that might that you always talked about, right? We have to over we're overcomers of those sins, right? Have you ever heard that before? We're overcome. We don't have to be identified with the sin. We have to be identified that we're children of God. And we are the glory of God. So we can go from victory to victory. We can go from you know one in one problem that we have as we're praying. We go go through these problems and these issues. I love Psalms 23. I love always saying this because I think it's true. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for your rod and thy staff to come, right? So I'm going to have pro we're going to have problems. That's what the Lord said. We're going to have problems. But I'm not going to like camp out in those problems. I shared that on the, on the Facebook Live. We're not going to camp out there. We're just going to, we're going to, we have victory and victory. So we can walk, like we can walk with the glory of God. We can walk with the Holy Spirit. This is what this means. What does it mean to walk with the glory of God? It means the Holy Spirit is directing your, your thoughts and your actions every moment, right? You're saying, God, I'm submitting to you this morning. Okay, I get up in the morning. Lord, I'm submitting my will to you this morning. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do. Get in my car, and the Holy Spirit says, stop over here. I'm going to stop over there. Or the Holy Spirit says, talk to this person. We can talk to that person, right? That's what it means to be the glory of God. Because what are you doing? You're bringing life to a dead person. You're bringing life to a person that's hanging on the side of that cliff, you know, that's going down to the pit of hell, and we're going to grab that person, we're going to bring them out. We're going to give them hope. We're going to show them what eternal life is. That's what, that's what we do. That's what our purpose is. Why 40 days of prayer? Because 40 days, it's like, take, uh, we did, tw we did uh, a week of prayer, we did 21 days of prayer, uh, we did all these different things. But 40 days of prayer is kind of interesting, because in the Bible, there's a lot of 40s, right? Even Jesus went in the desert for 40 days. The children of Israel, the generation that was disobedient to God, was 40 days in the desert, and there's a new generation started. Right? 40, or 40 years, did I say 40 days? I, uh, thank you for correcting me. 40 years, right? So there are 40 years, right? 
So there's a lot of 40. It flooded. How many days did it flood? 40 days and 40 nights, right? So it's kind of a cleansing thing. It's like there's a, I can do a week. I can do 10 days. I can do 21 days. But 40 days? That's like God get rid of whatever is in me that's not like you so I can be like you and go forward. Amen? 40 days. Because on Resurrection Sunday, and I don't even, I don't even like to ab advertise Easter Sunday. You guys don't be ready. Like this is the, you know, the, the word of God is true. So we call it Resurrection. We celebrate on, on Resurrection Sunday Jesus raising from the dead. So we celebrate that. Right? And that's what we base our, our whole truth and what we believe in is on that moment. Jesus died on the cross and then he came alive. And then for how many days? It was 40 days walking around and people walking around Jerusalem with them. Amen? So 40 days is really significant. So I think it's, it's, it's a cleansing thing. It's, I'm making my fleshly nature and I'm going to submit it to God so he can change whatever's in me so it could be just like, how many want to be like Jesus? Amen. Like, wow, what does that mean? Do, like, do I have to lay on the cross and my? But he did say, take up your cross daily and follow me. Right? He did say, right? What did he say? Do you take a physical cross and carry it and walk around with it? I don't think so. But I think in our thinking and in our heart, we say, yes, God, whatever you want. Uh, lead me, guide me. I want to do your will. Not my will be done. Say that. Your will? Your will. Not my will. Not my will. Hallelujah. So what is, uh, there's a couple of things uh, I'll finish up with. This is the litmus test for prayer. Uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, if you're writing now, 2 Corinthians 1, 18 through 24. Let's go there real quick. I was peaceful, I was restful, 
But God, it was just being, it's like slowing down your day, slowing down everything, just spending time with God. I know for me, I can do that during the day. For some people, you can't stop in the middle of your day and take a nap. Or be in God's presence, right? Or, you know, maybe you have to get up earlier, right? Maybe I can, instead of getting up at 6 o'clock, you get up at 5 o'clock. I, I can't do that. But, you know, maybe some of you could do that, right? Or maybe, like, my first experience being in God's presence on a regular basis was lunchtime on base. Because all I wanted to do, I couldn't wait for lunchtime, so I'd get into the Word of God. And I'd grab my Bible, and I'd run to my car, and I'd sit there for about 55 minutes so I could read the Word of God and be in His presence. I couldn't wait. It was year after year after year. It was in my car and being in the presence of God. I couldn't wait. And then it was Saturday morning on the beach in North Carolina, walking on the beach with God. Every Saturday morning, God would, I'd go meet God at the beach. He likes the beach. I like the beach. <laughs> It's just, now it's all the better. The place, the same, we went there like, a couple years ago, we went back there. It's all uh, condos and developments and that whole area, people fishing. But it was just all uh, just, a, uh, uh, just a plain old beach. And sand beach, sandy beach, and I could walk for a couple miles just praying and asking God what to do. You know, and in that time, I, got to, I think I saw the story once before, but um, one of those mornings, uh, Tina and I, uh, I was only. Uh, Lance Corporal, Corporal in the Marine Corps, PFC, I can't remember, I, was, I got out of the brig, so I was busted, so I, and we didn't have much money anyway. So all our money would be, we'd have our money, would be in Tina's jewelry box on our dresser. And so there wasn't a lot of money in there, but that's where we kept our grocery money and all, that we, all our wealth was in the little box. And uh, one morning, the Holy Spirit told me to go in there and take some money out of there. And I thought, oh, well, I can go get a soda, you know, in the back or a water on the big back of the beach. So I went in there, got a dollar, and put it in my pocket, because I think it was soda or water was 50 cents back then or a quarter. But anyway, uh, I was walking out the door, and the Holy Spirit says, no, go back and get more. <laughs> and I said, okay. So I grabbed the $20 bill, which was very rare for us to have, but I grabbed it, grabbed it and put it in my, my pocket, and I'm like, okay, I'll just put it back when I... My thought was, I'll just put it back in, the, in there when I get back, right? And I, was, I got done praying, and I had a wonderful time with the Lord, and watching the seagulls and the dolphins and all that out on the beach. And, and uh, I was driving back uh, to, to home on uh, Highway 172, and there was this couple <coughs> out digging up uh, beer cans and soda cans off the, off the side of the road. And the Holy Spirit said, that money's for them. And so immediately, because I know that voice, I slammed on my brakes and I pulled over. And if you've ever been on a beach road, you can't pull over on a beach road because it's like sand. You can just sink. Your car will just sink, right? There's this one spot, which is a little bit bigger than my car, that could fit the car. And it was right there. It's like God even provided a parking spot. I didn't have an excuse like, God, I can't, you know, I can't park, so I'm going to just go home, right? And I got out of the car. I, I, even to this day, I remember that little girl. And... I just walked over and I said, hi, my name's Bob, and uh, the Lord will speak this to you. And of course the mom was really happy and thankful, and I'm like, just don't thank me, thank God, you know. And I don't know what I'm doing here anyway, but you know, <laughs> but just being obedient. And that little girl was like, I mean, she's like a little angel staring at me, like just the, her look at her face was just so amazing. It was like, it was me, her, and her little face. It was just, the sun was shining on it. I just kept, I, in my heart, it was like I knew I was being obedient, and she knew I was being obedient to God. Amen? It's a little thing, right? 20 bucks, it wasn't a lot. I mean, but it was just the fact that because I was spending time with God, because I was in my little circle every day, in His presence, then the voice of God becomes clearer. Amen? How many want to, God wants to be that clear to you? He wants you, like, in a second's notice, and when he tells you to do something, he, he's right there with you. I, I, I was thinking, because of that pattern of prayer in my early life as a Christian, there's, God has helped me in everything. Like, even as a mechanic, I was trying to fix something one day in our car. Uh, we came back from ministry down in Shalom, North Carolina. We were able to go down there and be intern pastors for a little while. And we're driving back, and we had a, a Chevy Astro van. And the front wheel fell off in my driveway. It was making really funny noises on the 
it was a two hour drive, and I, we went over this bridge, <coughs> and Tina looked at me, and, I, and it was on her side, and it made the car make this really metal on metal weird noise, and I knew uh, it was bad. And I just kept on praying, Lord, just get me home, get me to the driveway, because the kids were in the car. You know, I mean, we went out in yeah, the middle of the road, middle of the night, you know? So we got to the car, and that front wheel just went, <sighs> and of course, I didn't get mad. I was like, praise the Lord, right? But anyway, the, I couldn't afford again, couldn't afford a mechanic to fix it. So I jacked up the car, you know, looked, got some manuals out, tried to figure it out, made a tool that the Holy Spirit showed me how to make to take it apart, right? Because he, he's involved in every aspect of your life. It's not like God's on Sunday or God's on Wednesday night. I mean, God's like every second, every moment, he wants to communicate with you. And I think the 40 days of prayer just helps us to kind of kind of get the cobwebs out of our hearing and hear the voice of God so clearly that we know it. Because as we go past the 40 days of prayer, I pray that you continue to journal. I pray that you continue to find time to be with God. I pray that you want to be in His presence. You want to spend time with God. Because I don't care if you're an uh, elementary school teacher or uh, whatever you do in life, God wants to be involved in all of that. Your marriages, your relationships, Amen? And everything that we do, because we are His glory in your, we bring the message of hope to a dying world, amen? You and me, we're responsible for that, amen? Jesus did His part. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say, I want more. I want more. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18. So this is a, a part of our Christian walk that I believe God wants to take us to. Okay. Some of you might already be there. Cool. All right. Some of us may not be there. We're going to learn. God said, all authority, in Matthew 18, 18, he says, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth, you will bind in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth, you will loose in heaven. I look at that and I say, whatever we pray for, God's going to bring us authority to pray over that. You have authority over every demonic spirit that's around you. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. You have authority over every demonic spirit that is around you. Because they want to trip you up. They want to make you question your relationship with God. They want you to say, oh, look, how, you're such a bad person. You, God can't hear your prayers, right? Anybody ever heard that, right? But you're going to say, no, in the name of Jesus, I am a child of God. I have the authority to bind. So I'm going to say, Father, on earth, these situations, I take authority over them. And I want the freedom and the power that's in heaven to be right here, right now. He said he'd give it to you. Amen? Amen? We don't have to be fearful of anything. Anything. Any demonic spirit, we have authority over that. And we, they're here. So let's, let's be real, church. They're here. Right? They want to stumble. They want to control you. They want to overtake your thinking. They want to. So, I, you know, I was thinking, uh, uh, was it Charles Spurgeon? Yeah, Spurgeon. He wouldn't even allow a newspaper in his house because he just wanted to have the Word of God in his heart and mind all the time. <laughs> How about that, folks? Turn off the TV for 40 days. Turn off the Olympics and all of that we were watching, right? Turn, what would happen in your life if you say, okay, I'm, the only media that I'm going to receive is from God. I'm going to pray and I'm going to spend time in His Word. That'd be crazy, right? I'm going to journal all those thoughts that He gives me so I can see what God's going to do later on in my life. Amen? Do that. I don't know. I'm going to encourage you. you know, I can't tell you to do that. I remember Pastor Stenson, he was my first pastor. He was like, don't watch TVs. We had a TV fast, right? Everybody at the church would fast TV, right? The whole church would. And on Saturday night, we had a prayer. We had, we had what we call Hour of Power every Saturday night. That's a good prayer. Time of prayer, right? Old fashioned is something got turned. Hour of Power. It, and Pastor Gilt is in the going. We all had to go. I mean, he did. I mean, I don't care if you're in the middle of the beach out with your family on a picnic. Uh, at 6 o'clock on Saturday night, the church, you were at church. Right. About 80% of us were at church. The other ones, you know, we call, uh, you know, 
we judged them, I guess. We, we had some bad habits back then, too, okay? So, but we came together and prayed. Pastor Stenson would be on a, he was a big guy, and uh, he would pray, right? And we would listen. I'd, just, I'd, I'd be by the piano on this side right here where our piano was, and I'd sit there and listen to Pastor. I'd, the whole hour, I'd just listen to him pray. It fascinated me. He had this relationship with God. Like, he was actually talking to God first hand, right? And I wanted that. You know, so I practiced that. But then at the end, we'd all get together and hold hands. And we'd all pray for the service on Sunday morning. Woo! It was two hours later. We didn't, it wasn't an hour of power. It was like two and a half hours before we even left the place. Because we just couldn't, you didn't want to leave because of the presence of God. We need that. Yes. Capital City Church needs that. You need that. We need the power of God in our life that way, right? So the hunger, the, the asking and seeking and knocking, I can't put that in you. Like, I want to say, please, ask God more. Seek God more. Not more. God will answer those prayers. Amen? For you and me. That's one of my heart's desires, that we do that. We need the presence of God daily in our lives and corporately together so we can be effective uh, and touch and reach people for Jesus. Because, again, the mission is not just to win the lost, but actually disciple them. Right? Oh yeah, we raised them out of that pit. We grabbed them. We did the work. We, we, we sacrificed for ourselves. We went out and did what we could to, to bring that person to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But then it's now teaching them how to walk as a believer. Right? How not to identify with their past. Identify who they really are in God. Amen? All things are past. All those things that we, we talked about earlier, we can teach them. We have to teach them to be strong in Jesus. Amen? So they can be and do the same thing that we're doing. That's how the church multiplies, that everyone is sharing their faith, but not only that, then they're discipling them so they can be strong. Because the enemy who likes to come and steal those new babies, right? Put doubt in their minds. Oh, my old life was better than the life this life. They talk about giving up. How many have been in a church where you talk about giving up everything? Like I just said, give up watching TV, right? Can't do this, can't do that. I say go do what you can. Be in the world, don't be of the world. Let your light shine wherever you're at. And I let, let the Holy Spirit teach you what you should or shouldn't do. How about that? Yeah. We can go through Ten Commandments and say, these are pretty good to follow, right? Mm -hmm. right? These are something we shouldn't do. But for, for the most part, go and win the loss. Mm -hmm. Go and love on them. But our heart for that only comes, I really truly believe, true revival comes right here in a prayer circle. Yes. When we bow our hearts to God and say, yes, God. I'll challenge you to pray this prayer this week. How's that sound? <laughs> Are you ready to take the right now? Write this down. Go for it. Yeah. Pray this prayer this week. You need the rest of your prayer during all time. This is gonna be this is gonna this is gonna blow you away. Lord, use me. Yeah. Lord, use me. Here I am, Lord. Yes. Use me, Lord. Use me to see that person that is dying without hope. Use me, God. Can I touch just one more person for your kingdom, Lord? And I don't be totally honest with you. I mean, not just doing good deeds, okay? Not like, you know, buying a big groceries or, you know, just helping people because you do it. I mean, buy the big groceries and then pray with them and share Jesus with them. And the reason you bought the big groceries is because you didn't have groceries at one time. And God helped you and I want to have you with big groceries. Amen? Love on them like only God can love on them. Use you, God. I love when Linda was in the hospital. I'm going to close with this. I, I, I love when Linda was in the hospital. Her blood pressure was all my stuff. This was, I mean, things were all going haywire. And the Lord told her she's not done yet. Right? It, you're, not, you're not done. Because I remember Linda came to church a couple, way over a year ago. Like, yeah, I just came. I just come to church. I'm just here to be served. Right? And soon found out that it's not about being served, it's about serving others. And God will meet your needs, amen. And God miraculously healed Linda, her, her tummy, and, and 
Here she is today. And I, I just, God's doing some great things because we pray. So the challenge is, is if, uh, if you haven't signed up online for the 40-day prayer challenge, please do so. Under Mark Batterson, you get the email every day, and then you get the booklet to go along with it. You can, if you don't have the book, order the book. If it's on Amazon, or if you order through their website, it gets there in a couple days. You catch up with the, 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 the uh, days of uh, uh, devotions. You know, do it. Take, make an effort. Make an effort to do it. It's going to be worth your time. You're going to be in God's presence. And then we'll, we, we'll go over the devotion time during the, the phone calls. But then we'll pray together, okay? We'll pray together. Uh, on, uh, starting tonight, 9 o'clock. We'll, I'll be tired because we got a board meeting tonight. So, yeah, I'll be exhausted. But you know what? There's nothing like being in God's presence together with God's people. Amen? There's nothing like saying, I'm going to sacrifice this hour or however long it takes. I think we haven't done an hour yet, but anyway. But we, we just come together and pray together and worship God together and believe God together that God will be a miracle in your life and the life of this city. Amen? Let's stand. I want to stand. I want to take a moment. I want to pray over you. I don't know. Did, did Beth leave? Did anybody? Did Beth leave? I just want to know. She, she did leave. All right. So, why don't we do this? Uh, let's pray for Beth. Okay? Let's pray for Beth. And let's pray. How many of you need, just, you need prayer this morning for something? Like, how about this? How many in your body you need prayer in your body? Yeah? One? Who else? Prayer in your body. Okay, one, two, three, four. Can, can you, some of you just gather around, like Lewis, all, yeah, all around? Yeah. Keep your hands raised. So, would you just pray for them, lay hands on them, like the Word of God says we're praying for each other? Hallelujah. Okay, we'll end with prayer. Because we want to pray. We believe God can do a miracle. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Let's lift up Beth for first. Father, we humbly come to you in the, your son's name, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. I thank you for touching little Mason, Lord God. I thank you for healing his body. I thank you for all the doctors and the nurses and the specialists and the surgeons and the all the team that is working with him over these last six months, Lord God, Father, we come to you humbly and say, God, please, God, please touch this little boy. Father, recreate those kidneys to function, Father, so dialysis will happen, Father God. Father, may that little kidney come to life, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we agree. Everyone in this room today, we agree, Father. And Father, your word tells us that if we agree as touching anything, God, we're not asking for ourselves. We're asking for little Mason. Father God, we're asking for this child to be whole. Father, at the same time, bring peace to Beth and the family, Lord God. Just comfort them day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute as they monitor his blood, as they monitor everything, Father, that, that little boy does, Father. God, I pray you give her peace. Father, I know what it is to have a child in a situation where you, you just can't do anything. You have, we have to rely on God. We're relying on you. We're agreeing with her. Father, for that little boy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you for healing him. Thank you, Father. By Jesus' stripes, he is made whole. You be healed too. In this room, you be healed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, you see every hand raised, God. You see every person that is in need of healing, Father. I thank you for your miraculous healing power in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Dad, for touching your children this morning. Thank you, God. Father, we, have, we, we can go to the doctors. We can go get the medicine. We can go do the things that we can do in the natural. But, God, we're looking for a supernatural touch on your children this morning. And, Father, I thank you for that. Thank you for healing. Thank you for showing up, God. Thank you for bringing your glory in our lives. Thank you, God, as we continue to grow as one. 
to bring glory to your son. Father, we know that he'll be lifted up in this place and lifted up in mass. And God, thank you for, again. Lord, bless every heart. Bless every family, Father God. Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' precious name. And we all together said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, take a minute to love on some people before they leave. Amen. If you're visiting, we thank you for visiting. And uh, we can answer any questions. We'd love to be there for you. God bless you. We love you.